I notice I usually say hey like three times. Um, so Karibu Sana to Mary's World. It's a new um, episode. It's an episode. Just a video. Yeah, and uh, just to say thank you so much for all that I've been watching and liking and commenting. I really appreciate. I feel happy. I feel happy, I feel overjoyed. Um, yeah, so Asante Nisana for being here and being a part of this life. I'm grateful. Yeah, um, so for the new subscribers, maybe I can just do a small intro of who I am. So my name is Mary and I'm currently 29 years old. I am a Christian, a believer. A follower of Christ um, yeah Christ is, is my rock he's my friend he's my anchor he's my everything I think for me that is what keeps me going he is what keeps me going I'm also a mom to two lovely children I am an entrepreneur I have two businesses <laughs> currently one that deals um, in expectant and nursing moms um, clothes and accessories and the other one uh, is a, an extension of my passion for organizing and decluttering. So do feel free to engage with me when it comes to those things, right? Yeah, I'm uh, also an author. I've published one book. Uh, many will come. Yeah, apparently, uh, once a writer, always a writer. Zitakuja tu, zitakuja, just be patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so come a I no tripod. My hand is tired. Uh, this is very very random. Also, um, what else am I? I'm currently still studying. <laughs> School never ends. There's someone who told me that apparently I'm a student for life because I never stop learning. I just never stop. Um, seeking for more knowledge. I'm currently doing a diploma in public relations virtually. Uh, I could have already finished it, but I'm still working. I'm um, employed. So it becomes a bit difficult sometimes to have time to do that. I'm also in my last year of uh, doing my PhD in international relations. Most people do not know this, but I want to be called doctor and I'll be called doctor probably end of this year or next year. God willing. And uh, what else? I recently started a podcast <laughs> as an extension of the conversations that I usually have on matters motherhood. I'm very passionate about motherhood and I decided, you know what, let me take these conversations um out of instagram and take them to another platform so i've only been able to upload like three episodes so far so do follow us on spotify i'll i'll uh, plug the links for all these things that i've talked about so you guys can actually follow me right yeah i think nihayo too we give you quite introduction is there anything else i'm a daughter to my mother i am a sister to my siblings I am an aunt to my nephews <laughs> and many more, you know, people. I'm, I'm a niece to my uncles and my granddaughter to my shoshos. I think that's just Max, uh, my intro. I'm a very passionate person when it comes to motherhood and things of things of God and just life. I love nature and I love to make money. I'm trying to make more money. I have friends who are really, actually one particular friend that is really pushing me to make money, more money. <laughs> and I'm grateful for such a circle of friends. I have um, a great passion for for farming as well. Just that I stopped um, doing the bit of farming that I was doing. I was doing rabbitry, rabbit farming. I stopped for a moment, but I'll probably go back to it yeah what else what else i'm 100 percent kenyan 100 percent kikuyu to be precise 
yeah that's it sindio kama kuna kitu kingine kuna kitu kingine so anyway <laughs> in this new video i'll just be taking me back cuz um i don't know for the new subs i usually upload videos for now and past videos right so by past videos i mean especially videos that uh, that i was filming when i was um in china for my masters so most of my videos nataka tu kutoa hiyo nini kwa ma picha zangu video zangu nini just to clear space and just have those memories put somewhere where i can access and i can be able to share them with with you all yeah so this particular one that i'm about to upload is um on a volunteer experience that i had and uh the volunteer organization of young play farm so that's like um Rotaract in Kenya or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just a volunteering um, organization or how we have Red Cross, but you know, Red Cross is universal. So yeah, so for China, they have Young Life Farm and I was a part of that in my campus and we used to do a lot of volunteer thingies, activities, mostly involving teaching, teaching English to Chinese um, students, mostly pupils in primary school. And then uh, we'd extend to other activities So for this particular one it was um during a time like this. So happy Chinese New Year. It's February and this is when um the Chinese have turned uh a new year. It's the year of the dragon this year. Yes. So around 2019 uh around now this period where it was spring break and the Chinese usually go for their holidays. Um that is the time that they meet with their families like a Christmas for us. Now for them this is when they like go to Shago, meet with their families, spend time with their families, engage and all that. So we were engaged in a volunteer activity whereby we were assisting travelers in a train station to get to know where their train is, uh print ticket nini tukaizo. And let me tell you, Wuhan has a very large population. It's, it's possibly larger than some countries <laughs> in the world. Not possibly, it is. And you can imagine how chaotic it gets even for us here in Kenya when people are traveling for the holidays. So it was chaotic. And now Ungeza now the the um, the population it was very difficult um to like coordinate people in the train station showing them where to print their tickets and you see like how they've um built the sgr is somehow the very similar it's somehow very similar to how their trains look like um in china and it was an interesting experience because we were working with other chinese volunteers and you know language barrier here and there though some of them can understand a bit of english for me my chinese is really bad um so it was mostly sign language or whatever or you just use google translate okay, there is no google in china so you use those apps for translating so um yeah this activity was very involving tulikuwa tunatoka mapema asubuhi mapema asubuhi mapema we get on a metro uh, connect i think we used to connect two metros to get to the train station that we were working at that was the Wuhan railway station very massive very beautiful i had a good time honestly um apart from it being very tiresome and then being that it was during winter so it was very cold nasa mwezi wa makofia uko mkaiwezi you have to still look professional because you the guys that are supposed to be assisting um the travelers Well, this this was just one of those experiences that um we really faced um racism <laughs> a lot of it and colorism because um well it's expected when you are abroad by the way just so you know just so you know it is expected when you're abroad and when you're in a country that um doesn't have much black people <sighs> so it was a bit difficult sometimes because you really want to assist someone but just because of your color they don't be helped by you they prefer to be helped by their own do you take offense no don't take offense you just 
do your work, mind your business, go home. Um, but it doesn't feel nice, to be honest. On an emotional level, it does not feel nice. No, you feel bad. You feel, <laughs> you feel rejected. You feel bad. But um, don't take it personal, honestly. Yeah. So it was very cold. You're not allowed to wear gloves because um, you need to be holding tickets and all that. So we used to have these heating pads. I really wish I had one. How it used to look like. But we had these heating pads that um, we'd uh, patch on our bodies. We'd be given, I think, one each. I think. So you can patch it anywhere on your body. You rub it and then it somehow produces heat. So it, it's really effective. It used to help. I actually carried um, like two packs. I bought my own when I was coming back um, just to have a feel of that when I'm home when it's cold during July or so you can use those so it's very interesting how even the, those chemicals work is very interesting so yeah you'll just get to see how it was it's just random videos and pictures of, of the experience itself just wanted to give an introduction of how it was really in terms of the work that we were doing in this particular station and also how it was generally the experience with the with the citizens which was not um the very best but some of them are very friendly they'd actually be so excited that they're being served by people that are not um of their own nationality they'd see that it is such a selfless action yeah and i, I Honestly, I'd appreciate such people because um, they were just volunteering. We were just being kind to you all and just helping you and trying to make your journey smoother and, you know. But let me tell you something that I noticed. You see how here we don't like uh, giving our babies bags to carry? <laughs> let me tell you. Oko, wana bebeshwa bags. Small kids, like six years, seven years, eight years. When I bought my bag, Muzito, me by the way, I was shocked. The way he had to ask me, "Oh, do you my bag? Can I take it? Do you what? What? Aye, when I bought my bag, Zao, those kids and they're really heavy. I don't know if I have a video that shows at least one, but where? That is when I was like, okay. By the way, I think we are very soft with our kids. Uko, some national, some nationals. I wanna be bought to turn you when to Zima. By the way, Jibebe bag, and then that is one of the places that I saw um, women breastfeeding. Cause most times you will not see a Chinese sitting down and breastfeeding. By the way, very rare occasions. Children are usually introduced to formula very early, and formula is very affordable in China. So I was surprised to see women breastfeeding by the way because it was not a common thing to see um what else do i want to mention also their train stations are really nice they are very huge like very huge You'd actually literally get lost and then there's always hot water by the way uh there are hot water points where you can just um make your own noodles if you're hungry as you wait for your train or you can make coffee, you know, because the Chinese really thrive on instant meals, especially noodles. They love, love noodles. So, kunamaji, or if you want to just drink water, there are, there are those hot water points that are very convenient. Um, also, there are areas for changing babies, which is something that we really need to work on here in Kenya. And then, something about China, there are toilets everywhere. Everywhere. I think because the population is also high. There are toilets literally everywhere. And they are free. And they're well maintained. They're very clean. Actually, there's a park I went to. I don't know if I still have that video. It was a church event and we went to a particular park. And Nilingia here public toilet. And I was like, what? This is a public. Are you kidding? This is a public, public toilet. It's so well maintained. It's so clean. It's so well um, maintained. Like it was just nice. 
we need to work. I know we have other problems, but a toilet is a basic need. <laughs> Legit. Legit, we all go to the washroom. So investing in toilets is, is something very important. Cause I, and do we have to lipisha really? See, we are paying taxes. Kwanza zakaya metuongeza taxes uku karibu he, karibu tax we hewa. Sasa ye anafatu watengeneze chon. Kila mahali na zikuwe free na ape watu kazi ya kuosha he. Kusabu he, life is hard as it is. Anyway, <laughs> enough of the rant. I hope you'll enjoy the video. You'll get to see how the place looked like, the people I worked with. I used to go with some of my friends, uh, including my roommate. At least we work at the same shift. Because <laughs> guys, we used to wake up really early. And for me, I never ever got to a point where I adapted to Chinese time. China is literally five years, not five years, five hours ahead of us. And I miss it quite years ago. I still kept my Kenyan time while there. I was unable to catch up with, with the time difference. Uh, so it used to be a bit difficult for us to wake up and be ready in good time. Remember there's a time it was raining in the morning. Because remember it's winter, it's it's coming to the end of winter. So uh, it's it's getting to spring. That means it's raining more. It's still very cold. Yeah, so we'll get to see that. So, so enjoy and keep subscribing, keep showing love. So, uh, hey.